Good evening, Algebra 2. Today we are going to be talking about positive rational exponents. Um, so let's break down that title. You obviously know what the word positive means. Um, if you remember from Algebra 1, rational, that word there has ratio in it. So all that that means is that you're going to have some sort of a fraction. So a rational number is, can be written as a fraction. And we've been talking about all unit, what exponents are, so obviously you know what those are. Let's talk first about our rational exponent theorem, um, and it says for any non-negative real number x and positive integers m and n, first thing we know, if we have a rational exponent, this is what this looks like here, you have x to the m over nth power, um, that's the m over the nth is what makes it rational, uh, you can break it down. You can say, all right, well I could write that as m and n separately, so I would have x to the 1 over nth power, and then m over here by itself. So if we take, if you remember our rational, or our, excuse me, our exponent rules here, if you take a power to a power, you're going to multiply these two, in which case we'd have this m being over 1 as a fraction, and if we multiply those fractions, we'd have 1 times m, which is m, and then n times 1, which is n, and we'd get m over n for our power, which is what we actually started with. So we're actually kind of breaking it back apart. Alrighty. So if you have it written like this, you can break it down um, and write it this way. So it says to the mth power of the positive nth root of x. Okay, Because remember when we take the reciprocal of a number here, like let's say this was 1 over 2, that would be the square root of x because you're taking x to the 1 half power. Furthermore, we could take that same thing, so we're starting out with x to the m over nth power, and we could break it down the other way. We could put m on the inside, and then take the 1 over nth to the outside. It works because of the same reasoning up here, but this is kind of backwards. You would say the positive nth root of the mth power of x. So this is just saying the different orders that you could write this in. That's the only difference between these two. Main key here is that you can actually break them apart and do the power, and then the square root or the nth root separately. All right, <clears throat> example one says we need to simplify 25 to the 3 halves power. So using the rule that we just had, I'm going to write this down here again. So 25 to the 3 halves power. We're going to break that apart. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and write this as 25 and... Now once we do a few more of these, you'll see why I chose to do it this way. Because there's two ways, remember, that we can do it. Um, I'm going to write it to the 1 half power, so I'm going to keep the 2 on the inside, and then I'm going to take the 3 and put it on the outside. Now remember, these are equivalent expressions here, because if I take a power to a power, we multiply these. So 3 times 1 half would give you 3 halves, which is where you started with. So now, well, the way I did this is that this means I'm going to take the half power of 25, which basically just means to take the square root, and we all know the square root of 25 is simply going to be 5. So if we take the square root of five, 25, we get 5. We still have to address this power of a 3 out here, but we can do that. 5 cubed, well, 5 cubed we know is 125. So that's our answer there. Just to go ahead and verify, I'm going to go ahead and grab our calculator here and do 25 to the 3 halves power, and just to check to see if that works. So here, let's turn it on here. 25 to the... 3 halves, remember these need to go in parentheses here, uh, 3 halves power, and we hit enter, and boom, 125, so it clearly is going to work for us. Alright, next example, we're going to approximate uh, 25 to the 3 fifths, notice we have a different rational root here, to the nearest thousandth, so 25 to the 3 fifths power. Now let's go ahead and break this down like we were breaking them down before. We could write this one of two ways. 25 to the 1 fifth power. I'm going to put that whole thing in parentheses. With the 3 on the outside. Or we could write it as, these are all equivalent expressions here, 25 to the third power, and then, then take that to the 1 fifth on the outside. Okay. So either one of these here, now this takes 25 cubed, which actually, mm, well, that's not going to be very easy to do. If we look over here, we have 25 to the 1 fifth power. Well, geez, I mean 25 to the 1 fifth power, I couldn't even think of what that is. It's going to be a rather small number, and then we would cube it. So neither of these situations are really going to help us because 25 to the third power is a large number, so then we wouldn't be able to think of the fifth root of that. 
and vice versa. If I try to think of the fifth root of 25, uh, I can't think of it off the top of my head. It's not as easy as a square root. So for this one, now any one of these expressions is going to work for you. So you can take any one of these and put it in your calculator. Obviously, the easiest one to do is this guy because it's in the simplest form. So I'm just going to take that guy and I'm going to grab our calculators here and we're going to see what is here. So we're going to go ahead and put in 25 to the 3 fifths power. So 25 to the 3 fifths, remembering to use our parentheses here, 3 fifths power. And what do we get? 6.89864830707. So what they want us to do here is round to the nearest thousandth because obviously we're going to have to round somewhere. So thousandth remembers three places. So let's go ahead and write that down at 6.8986. Now this six makes this round up to a nine. So it's really 6.899. So let's go ahead and write that down as our answer. 6.899. Nine. There's our answer. Alrighty, so if you noticed in the previous two examples, you had 25 to the 3 fifths power right up here. 25 to the 3 fifths power and we ended up with 6.899, which was smaller than 25. In the first example, we still had 25 as our base, but now it's to the 3 halves power and we ended up with 125. So let's actually investigate those a little bit closer to see why that might be. So the answer 125 in example 1 is larger than the base 25. In contrast, in example 2, the answer 6.899 is less than the base 25. In general, when the base is larger than 1, such as in example 1, we had 3 halves, which is equivalent to 1.5, uh, the larger the exponent, the larger the power. So that's why we got a big number. This can be verified when calculating other rational powers of 25. So we would expect if we had something less than 1, like 3 fifths, then we would get something smaller than 25. So here's a, a, just a list of 25 to different powers here. Uh, 25 to the 0th power, obviously we know is going to be 1 because anything is 1 to the 0th power. 25 to the 1 4th power, we should expect that to be less than 25 because 1 4th, well guess what, that's less than 1. So it's going to be 2.236. Now it's bigger than what we had before. Pay attention to that. 25 to the 1 3rd power, still less than 1, so we should expect it to be smaller than 25, and it is, but it is bigger than our last one. 25 to the 1 half power, well that's just a square root of 25. That's easy, that one's 5. Again, bigger than these, but still less than the base itself. Then 25 to the 3 fourths power, <coughs> excuse me, still less than 25 because we're still less than 1 here. So we get 11.180 repeating, or not repeating, excuse me, but non-terminating. And then 25 to the first power, well that one's easy, we get 25 there. Now this is where they're going to be equivalent. Anything to the first power is just itself. So when you hit that, then everything beyond this is going to be bigger than 25 if we go bigger than 1 such as 25 to the 5 fourths power, that is bigger than 1, that's 1 and a quarter, so that gives you 55.901. Then you have 25 to the 3 halves power, and that's going to be 125. Again, exponent bigger than 1 gives you a result bigger than your base. 25 to the 7 fourths power is going to be 279.508. And then finally, 25 squared, obviously that's going to be bigger than 25, and it is, it's 625. So that works for any base that you have. It doesn't have to be 25. You could have a base, any kind of base you have. But as long as you have those rational exponents being smaller than 1, you're going to be smaller than your base. If you have something larger than 1, then you're going to be larger than your base. All right, example 3. Suppose that x is greater than 0. Simplify the quantity 27x to the 6th power to the 4 thirds power. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that down here. So 27x to the 6th power all to the 4 thirds power. And we're going to use our properties of exponents here in order to solve this. So 27 to the 4 thirds power. Everything needs to get hit with this 4 thirds power because it's all in parentheses. That includes this 27. So we take 27 to the 4 thirds power and then we say, all right, well, times whatever x to the 6th power to the 4 thirds power is. Okay, so that gets hit with the 4 thirds as well. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, actually, we could break this down a little further. 27 to the 4 thirds. If you notice, we could write that as 27 to the 1 
third power and then to the fourth. So we're kind of working backwards here because we're breaking this apart, but you're going to see why here in a second. Times, now this we could simplify. We know we're going to multiply because we're taking a power to a power here. So 6 times 4, when we multiply these two fractions, I'm just going to do a little scratch work here. 6 times 4 gives you 24 on top, and then 1 times 3 on the bottom gives you 3. You can simplify that. 24 divided by 3 gives you 8. So our final power here is going to be x to the 8th power. Okay. So that's done. Our x is done. We still got to worry about this 27 to the 1 3rd power and to then to the 4th. Now again, if you forget how to break these down, you could evaluate it just using your calculator, but let's use our brains here for a second. So 27 to the 1 3rd power, that's like taking the cube root of 27, which is the same thing as asking yourself what times itself 3 times gives us 27. Well, that number would be 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 gives you 27. So we could say this is equivalent to 3, and then we're just going to take 3. We still have to address this 4 out here, so 3 to the 4th power, which we'll do in a second. And 27, uh, sorry, not 27, x rather than to the 8th is what we have left over here. Okay, so 3 to the 4th power. Well, this is kind of like working backwards because we know 3 to the 3rd power is going to give us 27. So we just need to take 27 and again multiply it by 3. So 7 times 3 is 21, 2 times 3 is 60, so 60 1 plus 21 is 81. Okay, and you might remember that because you've probably seen that quite a bit this unit. So 3 to the 4th power is 81. So we have 81 times x to the 8th, so that's 81x to the 8th power. So, very nice for us because they asked us to simplify and it becomes much simpler than what we started with. No more rational exponents, now we have all as just whole numbers and it looks a lot cleaner than it did. Alright, we have two more examples in these notes for tonight. So let's just go ahead, I'll pause the video here and we'll pick back up in the next video. See you soon.